All right, welcome back. Uh, we've reached the end of the year. It's almost Christmas. The uh, the new year is just around the corner. New Year's Eve, and then 2023, a whole new year to to struggle through, and 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 you know, full of new games and movies and TV shows. But it's the time of year I like to look back on the what's come before. What are what are our favorite things? What are our least favorite things? And uh, th for the purposes of this video, I just thought we would talk about the good stuff. Um, Specifically, my seven favorite TV shows of 2022. So, go through these. I won't take too long, but I hope that, you know, most of these are actually new shows or relatively new shows, all except for one, which was the final season of a show. Uh, and I recommend all of these quite, quite strenuously. So, uh, without further ado, we'll start with the oldest of the bunch. Better Call Saul. Better Call Saul's final season aired in 2022, and the reason it has to be on this list, even though it's, you know, the sixth season, and I was trying to do mostly new stuff, uh, the reason it's on there is because it was just such a phenomenal final season. One of the best final seasons of any show I've ever seen, and one of the best series finales I've ever seen. Every bit as good as the Breaking Bad series finale, and in some ways even more emotionally powerful. Uh, just... Such a different show, right? Than Breaking Bad. Better Call Saul is so. Uh, it's 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 a little less violent, a little less dark, but it certainly has those elements. And, and it's, in a way, it's more character driven and, and a little more emotionally complex than Breaking Bad. Where, you know, Walter White was such a he was such a bastard, whereas Saul Goodman, hmm, not quite so much. Uh, and and his arc is just. It's so well explored, especially in this final season, where where you start to jump into the rather than just the prequel stuff, you jump into like the post Breaking Bad stuff. So that was really terrific, uh, and I just highly recommend everybody. If, if you've if you've gotten and you've tried Better Call Saul and you're like I don't know if that's for me, please give it another shot. It is well worth your time. All uh, right, number two and the only animated show on this list on Amazon Prime, my favorite fantasy show on Amazon Prime. Uh, Vox Machina. So this is a cartoon adaptation of the Critical Role D&D uh, &D games, right? So they've they crowdfunded this animated show, and all the voice actors who are in the these 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 D and D streams are now the voice actors for their characters in the animated show. I love Vox Machina. It's so freaking good. Um, I can't wait for season two, which is just around the corner. I have watched this. Well, I'm on my third go round now this year. So this is maybe the only show that I've actually watched more than twice this year. Uh, there, I think it's because it's like, it's the episodes are short and it's very funny. And so it's easy to, you know, just be like, ah, I'm going to watch Vox Machina again. Uh, I did the same thing with with Gallivant when that when when I watched that last year and other you know short episode funny stuff and that's what this is although it's so much more than that also uh, what I love about Vox Machina is that while it is very funny and there are a lot of crude jokes and it's very much a cartoon for grownups it's also got wonderful complicated characters who you care about. I will tell you this, Amazon's come out with several different fantasies recently. One of them, Rings of Power, another, Wheel of Time. I care about the characters in Vox Machina like a thousand times more than any of the characters in either of those shows. Yellow Jackets. Yellow Jackets on Showtime. Uh, what a brilliant show this was. Yellow Jackets is a, it's, it's, it's kind of in the genre of Lost, a plane full of teenage high school soccer players in the 90s, a girls soccer team crashes in the forest and you see how they survive. There's a lot of mystery. It bounces back and forth between timelines to the present when, when some of these girls who survived are all grown up and have families of their own. And there's mystery in both timelines. There's all this uh, just creepy, like magic realism stuff going on. There's, you know, it's, it's, Really, really, really well written. The characters are all really fascinating. It's primarily, uh, you know, female-driven show. Lots of uh, lots of different women and girls are, are. There are a couple male characters, but they're definitely not the the primary characters here. And uh, what this show does so much better than something like She Hulk is instead of beating us over the head that these are like strong, independent women, 
they just have good female characters, complicated. Uh, some of them are strong. Some of them are strong in different ways. None of them are really like fighter types, but they all have a different, you know, I mean, they're complicated characters. And isn't that what we want from shows? We don't just want strong characters. We want characters who we can relate to. We want characters who we can root for, root against. And Yellow Jackets, as it bounces between these two timelines, is just one of the most crazy, mysterious, wild shows I've seen in such a long time. There, the music is great in this show, also, and it really, it really fills you with dread as as you as you watch this. There's this constant sense of dread, and and it's so ominous and it's so crazy. And some of the twists and turns that that happen are so crazy. And I cannot wait for season two because it ended on some serious cliffhangers. So I love this show. I, I watched this show a couple times. Definitely check it out. Um, over on Apple TV, one of the best shows I've seen in years is Severance, uh, which was, most of the episodes of this show were directed by Ben Stiller, believe it or not, and it has a wonderful cast and a really, really trippy, weird, awesome premise, which is basically that there's this technology at this company called Lumen that can sever your work conscious consciousness from your, you know, outside of work, leisure, whatever, you. The real you. The real you never has to go to work again because once you enter the workplace, the, the, the chip in your brain that severs you clicks on your innie. They call them innies. And so this version of you exists inside the workplace only. The other version of you exists outside the workplace only. And what follows is a dystopian, crazy, exciting, mysterious wild twist and turn story that at the I tell you what in the last couple of episodes I was just I was yelling at the TV like no it can't end no oh my god what just happened it's so good oh my god a lot of people that say when they when they start it they're like oh this is going to slow I don't know what to think about it but I tell you it is worth watching it is so brilliant and 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 just a, a wonderful cast wonderful characters such a cool weird trippy office aesthetic. It's it's really good. I, I I cannot recommend it enough. It's another one that I had to watch a couple times. And I will watch it again before before season two comes out because holy crap, uh, you always notice something new and different. Um, now, uh, the next of my favorite shows is House of the Dragon. So this is the prequel spinoff series to Game of Thrones. I was a little hesitant about this one at first and I felt it was not... I didn't, I didn't think that the problem with it was that it was too slow, but there's a lot of time jumps, and it just has a very different vibe than Game of Thrones, and I wasn't sure how to feel about it at first, because I, I, at first I wasn't really connecting with any of the characters, I could take or leave most of them, and it was hard for me to care about the story because of that, but as the series progresses, it just gets so damn good. Uh, I don't think it's perfect. There's, I think there's a couple little missteps, a couple little bits of fan service that they didn't need to put in there. Uh, but overall, some. I mean, I think Paddy Considine as as the king, King Viserys Targaryen the first was the standout performance of the year. He was so absolutely phenomenal, and um, just this 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 whole the writing, the, the cinematography, the music, it's all just gorgeous. And I honestly, by the end of the first season, I thought this is a more serious grown-up show, more a less fantastical show, but a more serious show than Game of Thrones, and I, in, in some ways, I think it's better than Game of Thrones. Uh, we'll see. I can't make that call yet because we do have three more seasons, um, but at least they know they're making four seasons, 40 episodes, and they know how it ends. So hopefully we don't have a repeat of the sort of season eight, uh, season seven, season eight Game of Thrones issue. Phenomenal show. If you like, if you like fantasy, if you like medieval uh, court intrigue, you know, a, a, a tale. It's a tale of succession of the Targaryen dynasty. So, absolutely wonderful show. Remarkably, uh, the next show on this list is a Star Wars show, and that's Andor. Uh, sort of a prequel to Rogue One, but so much more than that. Uh, what I loved about Andor was that it's just, it's not just great Star Wars. It's just great. It's great storytelling. It's great TV. Period. And. Uh, you can you can watch it almost without any knowledge of Star Wars, and they don't rub Star Wars in your face all the time. There's not the the Star Wars theme songs. People don't say "May the Force be with you." You don't even hear about the Force because we're dealing with people who aren't connected to the Jedi 
or at least don't appear to be connected to the Jedi in any meaningful way. And again, this is more of a, a war story, a spy story. Uh, and it's just like, like the music, the cinematography, the polish on this show, it feels expensive. And the set design and the costume design and the writing and the acting and all of it is just, it is so much better than any other Star Wars. And I, I mean that. I, I think it's better, objectively, a better filmed, written, and acted show than the origin, than anything in the original trilogy. Now, it's not as much fun. It's not even close to as, as funny or as, you know, endearing as the original trilogy or as something like The Mandalorian, which is the other, I know, best Star Wars series. But Andor is a gripping drama that, that, that has just some of the best writing. I mean, not just of the Star Wars shows, but of, of anything this year. With, with stellar performances from people like Stellan Skarsgård, Diego Luna. Uh, it, it is a bit of a slow start, like some of these other shows. It gets off a little slow, but it's not a bad slow. It's like, calm down, take take a breath, get through it, just get through the, 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 the first couple episodes do, before you make up your mind. And I promise you, by the third episode of Andor, you're going to be like, okay, stuff is going down. And it just keeps getting better. All right, I almost forgot because I, for some reason, was thinking that this was 2021. Or it was earlier in the year, and I, I guess I'm just, uh, it's been a bit of a blurry year. Uh, Raised by Wolves, another HBO. That's three out of this list on HBO, although this, this one, unlike the other two, has been canceled. Uh, Raised by Wolves is one of the weirdest space opera sci-fi fantasy shows out there. Uh Vikings fans, you know, they love it because of Travis Fimmel, who's, you know, was Ragnar in Vikings, and he's here as a equally weird and bizarre character, maybe weirder than his his Viking character. Uh, but it's it's a crazy crazy story of these two civilizations at war with each other, the atheists and the and the religious group, uh, and 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 I can't even think of what they're called right now. But uh, but you have these these lifelike androids and and the it's it's hard to explain i don't even know if i can explain this show uh you just kind of have to see it uh it's so trippy and strange but it has i don't know almost this retro vintage sci-fi feel to it uh it it also has a bit of the alien vibe it is you know a, a ridley scott production he doesn't he's not a direct like the the showrunner or anything but it's it's part of his wheelhouse uh i can't believe this got canceled because it was just First of all, it ended with a lot of cliffhangers in season two. And while I can also not believe it ever got made, it seems like, well, here you are, you're two seasons in, at least give them one more season to wrap up the story. I I feel like more of these big streaming services and, 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 you know, like, you know, not just traditional TV also, but if you're going to cancel the show, at least give these, these shows one more season to do it. Say, you know what? This is it. We're canceling you, write an ending, boom. Maybe maybe even say, you know what, I'm only going to give you six episodes this time instead of 10 or 12. You get six episodes to wrap things up. Do that, at least do that. You've already put all this money into the sets and the, and the costumes and casting, hiring people to make the show. Just finish it up. Don't leave us hanging. You know, it really sucks to, to leave your audience who... You know your subscribers or whatever hanging like this, and it's not really fair to the people making these shows either. Uh, and this, you know, this maybe not the the biggest success story of a show ever, but at least it did get a cult following. It got great reviews, and it was something totally unique and different in 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 a sci fi landscape that usually isn't that original. Finally, we come to this is this is my my only other show on this list that it's not the first season, but it's a part of an anthological series, so. This season isn't directly related to the first season, and that's the White Lotus season two. Uh, only one or only two characters from season one carry over to season two, uh, so it's not it's not all new characters, but it is pretty a pretty small amount. And it's at a new hotel. I don't know if you've seen the first season of White Lotus, but it takes place at the White Lotus is a resort, a fancy resort, and it it dealt with the stories of the staff and the rich tourists. Uh, guests who were staying at the, at the resort in Hawaii. This one takes place in Italy, in Sicily, which is 
looks gorgeous. I want to go to Sicily. I think a lot of people who watch the show are probably like, okay, we're planning our trip in Sicily. Um, you just don't befriend a, a, a gaggle of evil gays. Uh, and sorry, that's, uh, you'll see. <laughs> um, damn it, that's a spoiler. I need to take that out. Um, anyways, White Lotus season two, great mystery, uh, f- phenomenal acting and writing. Again, this is just, it's in, unlike the first season, which was mostly about sort of power and money, this is all about sex, power and sex. <laughs> Uh, and, but there's some great, like, betrayal and, and conspiracy and, and just one of the wackiest, most unpredictable, uh, season finales of any show I've ever seen. It was just, it was so out there and awesome. Um, just, just great stuff. So yeah, those are my shows of the year. Now, I didn't see every show that came out this year, and some of the shows I liked a lot, like, I thought Midnight Mass was really good, but I don't think it was one of my favorite shows of the year. Some shows from last year I watched for the first time, like Arcane on Netflix, wonderful animated show. Uh, and and then there's just there's a bunch. You, I can't I can't put them all in here. And I haven't seen I haven't watched the peripheral peripheral yet. I haven't watched 1899 yet. And there's more. Um, other sort of runners up, I guess. Uh, I liked I liked what was it? Um, there's all these dates. It's that 18 something or other uh, Yellowstone spinoff. That was pretty good. Uh, and more. There's more, but I'm not going to list them all here. Uh, so those are my top seven of 2022. Let me know what your favorite shows are. What do you think of the ones I listed? Have you watched all of them? Which ones did you like? Which ones did you not like? Um, and you know, be sure to like and, and subscribe and, and hit the little notification bell and, and, uh, Merry Christmas. Peace. <laughs>